Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something, the show where I make something cool and show you how to make it too. Today, we're building a robotic drawing machine that draws pictures of your choosing in one continuous line. Let's get started. The drawing machine is made out of the following components. Two Y-axis braces, two NEMA 17 stepper motors, two motor shaft pulleys, two pulley cables, four Y-axis conduit bushings, one carriage plate, two X-axis conduit bushings, one X-axis brace, four quarter-inch diameter, 24-inch long PVC tubes, one X-axis pen holder brace, one pen stopping plate, four 60mm long M3 dowel pins, one pen slider tube, two compression springs, one pen, one custom circuit board with corresponding breakout boards to control the stepper motors, one half inch thick, 24 by 30 inch MDF board, and various fasteners to hold everything together. The electronics of the drawing machine are based around the custom circuit board I made for a 3D scanner, a project featured in an earlier Super Make Something episode. Links to both this project video and the website from which you can order a copy of the circuit board for yourself can be found in the video description below. For the drawing machine project, the custom circuit board is used to interface the following electronic components. An Arduino Pro Micro microcontroller, a power connector with screw terminals to supply power to the project, a push button to reset the microcontroller, an SD card breakout board used to read waypoints off of an SD card that tell the drawing machine how to move its motors, two stepper motor driver boards, and two NEMA 17 stepper motors. I first soldered male header pins to the Arduino microcontroller and stepper motor driver boards. Male headers were already soldered to the SD card board that I ordered, but if yours are not, be sure to solder these as well. I then soldered female headers to the corresponding locations on the custom circuit board, as well as screw terminals that will be used to connect the board to the power connector and stepper motors. I next soldered a push button to the circuit board, and then inserted the Arduino, SD card, and stepper motor breakout boards into their matching female headers to make sure that everything fit together. With the circuit board assembly complete, it was time to write the code to run the drawing machine. The drawing machine code is divided into two sections. High level code, written in MATLAB, that processes a user specified image into a continuous set of waypoints to generate a continuous line drawing, and low level Arduino code, which reads the waypoints and moves the stepper motors accordingly. Let's begin with the MATLAB code, which first loads the image and converts it to grayscale. After this, the image is halftoned, which converts the picture from a grayscale image into a binary image comprised of black and white dots. This is accomplished using a process called error diffusion, which works as follows. The pixel color of grayscale images are described as numbers between 0 and 255, with 0 representing pure black and 255 representing pure white. Beginning in a corner of an image, the first pixel's value is compared to a user-specified threshold value, in this case 128, the value halfway between pure black and pure white. If the pixel value is above this threshold, the pixel is set to white, otherwise the pixel is set to black. Compared to the original pixel, there is now an error in the image, equal to the difference between the pixel's current and original value. This error is then added or diffused to the neighboring pixel's value, after which this pixel's value is again compared to the threshold and its color is set to black or white. This process repeats for all pixels, resulting in a half-toned binary image. The particular error diffusion algorithm used in the MATLAB code is called Floyd-Steinberg-Dithering. While its math is a bit more involved than the previous one-dimensional example, because this algorithm diffuses error to the pixel's right and bottom neighbors, the operating concept behind this algorithm is the same as the one-dimensional case. After the image is half-toned, the code next finds a continuous path through all of the points using a nearest neighbor search. Like its name suggests, a nearest neighbor search simply finds the point closest to the current point, in this case the point with the smallest Euclidean distance, and adds it as the next point in a set of waypoints for the pen to travel through. The previous current point is then marked as visited, the newest waypoint is marked as the current point, and the algorithm repeats until all points have been traveled through. While this is a quick way to find a continuous path through all points in an image, nearest neighbor search is known as a greedy algorithm, which can run into trouble once the number of remaining points becomes small. If a point was ignored when the pen was close to it, the pen may have moved far away as it continued to work its way through the image, while the ignored point will become the nearest unvisited neighbor of a current point at some time during the search, this could result in the pen drawing a huge line across the paper, ruining the drawing. To overcome this, the code therefore breaks the image into a set of smaller square regions, plans individual paths through them, and then connects neighboring regions together as the algorithm iterates through the picture. 
The final step is to convert the waypoints, which are expressed as XY coordinates, into relative displacements, which will be commanded to the stepper motors in the drawing machine. This is done by simply taking a difference between neighboring waypoints. These waypoints are then written to a text file on an SD card. Overall, the algorithm produces clean, easily recognizable images, but using a nearest neighbor search definitely does not result in an optimal pen path. Deciding how to optimally travel through a set of waypoints is actually a thoroughly studied research question, more commonly known as the traveling salesman problem. This problem has applications in robotics, DNA sequencing, package delivery, and many other areas. If you are interested in implementing a different path optimization algorithm for the drawing machine, you can download a copy of the MATLAB code for this project using the link in the video description below. With the waypoints written to the SD card, let's now take a look at the low-level Arduino code in the Arduino IDE. The code first defines the microcontroller pins used to interface with the stepper motors and SD card breakout board, and then initializes the SD card. It then opens the text file containing the drawing waypoints, and then parses it line by line, commanding each stepper motor to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise in order for a pen to travel along the path generated by the MATLAB code. To program the Arduino, I disconnected it from the breakout board, plugged a micro USB cable into the microcontroller's onboard USB port, connected the other end to my computer, and clicked upload. Once the LEDs on the microcontroller finished blinking, indicating that the code had finished uploading to the Arduino, I disconnected the USB cable and reinserted the microcontroller into the female headers on the circuit board. With the electronics complete, it was time to design and print the drawing machine's mechanical components. The hardware components were designed using SOLIDWORKS, a computer-aided design or CAD software package. CAD software is used by engineers to create virtual 3D models of components for manufacture, which greatly speeds up the mechanical design process. The design parts were then exported from SOLIDWORKS as STL, or stereolithography files, which describes CAD models as a set of triangular meshes for 3D printing. The STL files were then imported into Cura, a slicing program that analyzes the components and generates G-code which tells a 3D printer how to manufacture each object. The G-code is then transferred to a 3D printer, causing its print head to move and extrude plastic using a process called fused deposition modeling to build each component one layer at a time. Several other printing processes exist, but this is the most common process for non-commercial printers to date. After several hours, the printer had manufactured all mechanical parts needed to build the drawing machine. With all the parts printed, it was time to assemble the drawing machine. In total, the 3D printer made 15 components. One carriage plate, two Y-axis braces, one X-axis brace, four Y-axis conduit bushings, two X-axis conduit bushings, one X-axis pen holder brace, one pen slider tube, one pen stopping plate, and two motor shaft pulleys. I first attached the two motor shaft pulleys to the stepper motor shafts using an M1.5 set screw. I next mounted the drawing machine's Y-axis stepper motor to the carriage plate using M3 screws. I then attached two Y-axis conduit bushings to the carriage plate using 16mm M4 screws and nuts, first finger tightening the components to hold them in place, and then using a screwdriver to clamp everything together securely. The remaining Y-axis conduit bushings, as well as the two X-axis conduit bushings, were attached to the carriage plate using 20mm long M4 screws and nuts, with the X and Y axis sandwiching the plate between them. I again began by finger tightening the components in place, and then clamped everything together using a screwdriver. After this, the X axis stepper motor was mounted between the X axis conduits using four more M3 screws. With the carriage fully assembled, four quarter inch diameter, 24 inch long PVC tubes, which serve as the guide rails for the carriage assembly, were inserted through the conduit bushing holes. The two Y axis braces, which will keep the guide rails from moving, were then inserted at each end of the Y-axis PVC pipes. Two M4 screws were then inserted into the top of the braces to clamp the guide rails and hold them firmly in place. Using the X-axis brace, the same steps were then repeated on one side of the X-axis rails. At this point, it was time to build the pen holder subassembly, which is composed of one X-axis pen holder brace, one pen slider tube, one pen stopping plate, four 60mm long M3 dowel pins, and two compression springs that I took out of a set of ballpoint pens. I went to my garage and pressed the dowel pins into the holes of the pen stopping plate using a hammer. I next slid the pen holder tube over the dowels, followed by the two compression springs, which were placed on opposing dowel pins. I then carefully hammered the pen holder brace onto the top of the dowel pins until its top surface was flush with the tops of the dowel pins. After verifying that the pen tube slid freely on the dowels, and that the springs easily pushed the tube into the stopping plate, I went back inside, slid the pen holder subassembly onto the other side of the x-axis, 
and clamped it to the guide rails using two more M4 screws. At this point, it was time to mount the machine to its base, which is made out of a half inch thick, 24 by 30 inch piece of MDF that I purchased from my local hardware store. I first carefully aligned the edges of the Y-axis braces with the edge of the MDF base, and then screwed the Y-axis braces into the MDF using six half inch long number four wood screws. After this, I slid polyethylene spiral cable wire wrap around the stepper motor cables to keep them from getting snagged by the carriage as it moves during operation, which had a bonus effect of making the wiring of the machine look nice and clean. Using two more number four screws, I next mounted the circuit board onto the MDF underneath the X-axis base. I then connected the stepper motor wires and a barrel power connector to the circuit board's screw terminals. The drawing machine's motors move the X and Y axis carriages by pulling themselves along polyester string that is mounted to the machine's X and Y braces. For this part of the assembly, I first wrapped the string around the Y axis motor pulley and then fed each end through a hole in the Y axis brace. I then wrapped each end of the string around an M3 screw, making sure that the string was under tension, and used a screwdriver to lock it in place against the brace. I next trimmed the excess string with a pair of scissors, and then repeated the same process for the X axis. The final assembly step was to insert a pen into the slider tube and lock it in place using an M3 screw. Finally, I moved the carriages to their starting position in the top left corner of the machine, at which point it was almost ready to start drawing. The machine draws pictures on easel roll paper, which I purchased from my local craft store. I first cut the paper to size using scissors, and then mounted the paper onto the MDF using scotch tape. After I inserted the SD card into the reader on the circuit board, I then plugged one end of the power connector into the PCB, plugged the other end into an outlet, and the machine started drawing. The pen started to move across the paper, tracing out the path on the SD card's text file through the square regions that comprise the image. After about an hour, the machine created a robot handmade continuous line drawing that I could hang on my office wall. The drawing machine has the ability to produce some really cool hand-drawn photos, but there are a variety of other applications for this gantry system too. For example, a one-axis system could be used to create a DIY camera slider, or a three-axis system could be used as a basis of a large format 3D printer. Links to the Arduino code, MATLAB code, STL files, and the website where you can purchase a copy of the PCB used in this project for yourself can be found in the video description below. If you end up building this drawing machine yourself, or end up using the axes or code in one of your other projects, I'd love to see it. Please share a link with me in the comments below, or connect with me on social media. Also, if you're interested in videos of the robot drawing more pictures, or have any suggestions about what it should draw, please let me know in the comments below. I may start up a mini video series on this channel, featuring time-lapse robot drawing machine videos. Well, that's all there is to this episode. Thanks for watching, now go super make something! Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. Links to all project files can be found in the video description below. Click the subscribe button on the left to keep up with my latest projects, click the cards on the right to check out more episodes, and connect with me on social media. Thanks again for watching, now go super make something!